Hi, this is Phil Hinton and welcome back to Berlin and our coverage of IFA 2008. We're at the Brandenburg Gate, but we're going to head back into the Messe Center to see what other products are being released this year. So here's uh, the first of Panasonic's new Blu-ray players for the European market. This is the, the DMP BD35. It's a full profile two player, so it has BD Live on board. It also has decoders for uh, Dolby Digital, True HD, Dolby Digital Plus, uh, DTS Master Audio, and um, quite a nice looking little unit. It also has uh, a SD slot for AVC HD, and uh, it will also play back your HD JPEGs so quite a nice little machine and they also have another uh, new Blu-ray player which we're going to go and have a look at now. And this is Panasonic's other Blu-ray player for this year. This is the DMP BD55. It has most of the other the features which the 35 has, it's Profile 2, has BD Live on board. Also does your uh, SD slot for AVC HD. It has uh, 5.1 uh, outputs on the back, which are analog outputs, which allow you to connect it up to a legacy AV uh, receiver. It's quite a nice little machine. It looks almost identical to the BD50, uh, but obviously it has had uh, some little bits of updates here and there, and uh, quite a nice looking machine from the company. And here's another new Blu-ray product from uh, Panasonic. It is a Blu-ray recorder, but before you get your hopes up, this one is for France. It has a 500 gigabyte HDD drive and a twin HD tuner built in. Unfortunately, the HD tuners are not to the specifications or what the UK Freeview will be. So a um, little bit of work is still needing to be done. There are plenty of inputs on the back, but as I say, it's technology's moving on. It looks very nice, but unfortunately it's for the French. So in general, to launch a Blu-ray recorder, a requirement for us is that you, that you have enough free-to-air content on, on air already available so that the consumer really can record also a lot of content in high definition on his Blu-ray recorder. So in France it became clear already very early um, that high definition content would be available in a sufficient uh, quantity from this autumn. So that's why we uh, developed the first model for France mainly. So what about the UK? Um when can we expect to see our Blu-ray recorders? So in the UK we are in close discussion uh, with Freesat. Technology is a bit different, that's why we cannot simply use the French version. In France it's based on DVB-T, so UK will be set. Um, but we are in discussion and we'll uh, conclude when to come uh, to UK then soon. And these are Panasonic Super Flat Plasma TVs. We first saw these at the press trip in Valencia, but here they are again at IFA 2008. Now, no details on when these will be released, but they're only 24.7 millimeters thick. And uh, like I say, it's plasma technology. We saw something similar from Pioneer at CES, which was a little bit thinner. Again, we don't know when these are going to come to market, but this seems to be the big thing at the moment, as you've seen the releases from Sony and so on. That everything's getting thinner and thinner. Plasma technology, you can't go wrong if they can get it that thin, um, then I think we're on to a winner, especially for a black level and obviously your accurate colour detail. And as you would expect on the Panasonic stand, they have the PTAE 3000 all set up, and this time with a nice 235 to 1 anamorphic screen, uh, obviously using that zoom feature. Uh, which the PTA 3000 has and I've got to say seeing it on a 235 screen in this room uh, completely darked out it still amazes me at the quality just with the zoom feature without an anamorphic lens so as you know we broke the story on the PTA 3000 go check out that other video if you want any more details on it but it's good to see that they've actually set it up and taken some real time to get this projector working at its very best like I say with a 235 to 1 screen and again, it's still amazing me with the quality on offer. It's an LCD machine, you wouldn't think it looking at the picture. A 
and we end our tour of the Panasonic stand in front of what is probably the most impressive TV in the world. It's a 150 inch plasma, it is the world's biggest and just standing next to it you get a sheer sense of the scale. How do they get the inside and outside properties? <laughs> well we all know what happened with the 103 inch so I'd imagine 150 inch is going to be a little bit more uh, problematic getting into a premises or into a house. Actually speaking to the company, they expect to sell most of these screens to the corporate market for showrooms and so on. But it is an impressive sight to see anyway and it's certainly drawing the biggest crowds here on the Panasonic stand today. So you thought 1080p was uh, as big as you get, well, you're wrong. JVC on the stand this year are showing their uh, 4K, 2K LCD TV. This is in preparation for uh, Japanese broadcasters who are looking to bring in ultimate high definition quality to TV. Looking at this, it is absolutely stunning, the detail levels that you can see coming from the TV. Um, I would hate to hazard a guess as to how much this is going to cost at this moment in time. But as the market grows and uh, moves on, and once 1080p is out of the way, this is the future, 4K, 2K. So we've just seen a, a 4K, 2K LCD screen, but now I'm standing in front of uh, what's possibly the best projected image I have ever seen in my life, and uh, the, the guys at JVC have been kind enough to give me a private demonstration of this. It's a 4K, 2K projector, so that's 4,000 96 pixels by 2,400 pixels. It's 10,000 to one native contrast, 3,500 to one anti-contrast, and it uses a 1.27 DILA chip. And to be honest with you, you can see the image behind me now, and it really is, they said it about HD, and nobody really believed them when they said it's like looking out of a window, or you could dip your toes in the water. But with this, sitting at the right distance, you can see every little detail and it's not just the details in the center of the image now you probably can't pick this up in the camera but to the right hand side is a mountain range and standing where i'm standing now i can see every single tree that's on the hill in the very very background um, and that looks to be at least a mile or two miles away from where the camera position is and it's crystal clear so this could very well be the future. NHK are working on this technology and uh, I understand that it could even hit Japan next year with a consumer product. So this is something to look out for and this is exciting. Okay, and this is our second uh, little treat for the day from the guys at JVC. And uh, this is the HD750 and the control that everybody, our American and UK viewers, I say American because our videos I've noticed have gone global this last week on the HD 350. Well here we are, this is the HD 750, this is the colour management system that everybody's wanting to know about and yes it is 3D and the importance of it being 3D is that we can adjust the luminance as well as the saturation and hue. Uh, so this it's just a mathematical equation once you get the colour point accurate. So this is the toy that everybody's wanted because, uh, to be honest, the JVCs do push a little into the green territory and the, the native colour gamut. So this is ideal. And this is available on the HD750, so our thanks to the guys at JVC for giving us a quick sneak peek of this. And that's all we've got time for for this episode from IFA. Join us again for more coverage coming up very soon.